Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be making some minimal boho style decor that I really think you're going to love. So I'm so excited to share it with you. So let's dive right in. To make this DIY palm leaf, I used a large piece of craft paper and it's 30 inches wide and then I measured up 15 inches and then I measured across and found that center point at 15 inches and made a dot there. Then from each corner, I took my pencil and freehanded up from the corner to that point that I made in this sort of dome shape. And it does not have to be perfect, trust me, you can make it perfect later, so just freehand it for now. Then I took my scissors and just cut that out and you'll see you have a bit of a dome slash triangle shape. It's a little bit pointed at the top. Next, I folded it in half and this is how you can see that you can fix the mistakes. So it doesn't have to be this perfect stencil that you use. Once you fold it in half, you'll kind of see where there's some extra paper and you'll be able to cut that to make it even. So I just use a bit of painter's tape to paint it down to my table and then I cut off that excess paper so that now both of my sides are equal. Then I opened it up and I took one of the sides and I started to fold it in an accordion shape. So basically if you remember making paper fans when you were little, this is what you're going to be doing. Essentially, you're going to be taking that one side of your little dome shape and you're just folding it back and forth, back and forth in an accordion shape and making sure that it's smooth and try to keep the edges as even as possible. And then the smaller that you fold your piece of paper, the more intricate um, the design will be when your palm leaf is done. So just keep that in mind when you're doing your folds, but you'll see what I mean at the end. So just continue folding this side until you get to the end of the piece of paper and then once you do, you can pick it up and start to work on the other side following this same pattern. So just start folding it back and forth, back and forth in this accordion or fan shape until you reach the end of the other side of your paper. So you can obviously make these in all different sizes. This is just to give you the general idea of how it works. And then you can go from there and have fun with it, make all different sizes, different colors of paper and everything like that. So this is what it will look like once you're done with your folds and now it's time to make a little stem. So I took this wooden dowel and then I put a bit of hot glue on the end and used this extra macrame cord that I had and just started twisting it around the dowel and I didn't add any more glue until I got to the bottom. So I just basically twirled the dowel around and the string twisted right around it. When I got to the bottom, I added a little bit more glue to keep it secure. Now you can decide which part of the leaf you want to be the back and then you can slide your stem right in there. Then take an extra strip of your craft paper and just glue it around it to kind of hide it and cover it up and let it blend in. Last but not least, I added a little bit more glue on the back of the leaf and then I just kept the dowel in place with that glue so that it wouldn't slide around. And you can style this any way you want. You can put it in a vase, you can hang it on the wall. I think that would look really pretty as wall decor. You can add a bunch of different sizes, different colors like I said, but I think this looks so gorgeous. For this next project, you'll need some paper clay. You can find this at most craft stores, but also online, and I'll link some options below that I found that I think are a good price. So this is pretty soft and easy to work with, and if it does start to dry out a bit when you're working with it, you can just add a little bit of water. So I'm just rolling mine out into sort of like a long oval shape because I want to make a little dish out of it. So once I had it rolled out and flattened and rounded on the ends, I took my little knife here and just sort of like gave it a straight edge. And then a trick to using this air dryer paper clay is that you can add water to it to smooth any weird edges or bumps. So just dip your fingers in some water or a paintbrush in some water and just sort of smooth it out. And then I decided to kind of make like a lip or an edge. Um, so I folded the edges up a bit using my fingers and just sort of like smoothed it out again. And again, I dipped my fingers in some water and smoothed out any rough edges. I didn't want this to be perfect. I kind of wanted it to look a little bit raw slash like unfinished, I would say. I like that look, but I did try to make it as best as I could, like smooth on all sides as you can see. 
Now I'm taking this little fake leaf and I'm just pressing it right into the top of the clay. And the harder you press, obviously the bigger of an indent you'll have. I kind of wish I did press a little bit harder, but I was not sure how it was gonna turn out. So I just did my best and you'll see the imprint in your clay. So I decided to do this three times. Of course, you can make any shape that you want with the air dry clay. You can make like a round dish or a little bowl. I just wanted to make like a longer sort of trinket dish. So I did this three times with the leaf and I decided to like flip flop the direction that I was placing it in and I think it turned out really cool. So you're gonna let that dry overnight and it'll harden. And then as you can see, I've got my imprints here and I was testing it on some extra pieces of clay that I had, which color I wanted. And I did a poll on Instagram and the overwhelming response was this peach color. So I went with the peach and what I did was just add a bit of water to my paint tray and then a little bit of acrylic paint. I'm using this warm beige color that I love. And then I'm also using this thin watercolor paintbrush. So what you want to do is mix the paint and the water together and I would recommend just a tiny bit of paint and then mixing in the water with your brush and then kind of like testing it on extra clay if you have it. That's what worked for me. I would say I added more water um, than paint to the mixture because what you want to do is just sort of like lightly drop a bit of this watery paint mixture into the indent of each leaf and then it will sort of spread out but not overwhelm the design. So as you can see on my tester, I pressed the leaf in a bit harder and you can actually see all the details much better. So I wish I had pressed harder on the actual tray, but you live and you learn and that's why I'm doing this so that you can see um, my quote unquote mistakes and you can fix it for when you do it. So I just went along each leaf and filled it in with this watery paint mixture and tried to cover each one. And it, as you can see, it turned out pretty well. And then what I decided to do was kind of just go back on any of them that were a little too light and touch them up a bit. So you could absolutely leave it like this. I love the way it looks, but I wanted to add a little something extra. So I cut out four pieces of macrame cord that were each 10 feet long. And then I tied a knot at the top and I taped them down to my table. Then we're going to do a square knot. So you're gonna take the two pieces in the middle and just leave them alone. And then you're gonna take the piece on the right lift up those center pieces and then kind of take your piece on the right and make like a four shape over the piece on the left. Then you're going to lift that left piece, take it over your center pieces, under your right side string, pull it all the way through and because these are pretty long this part takes a little while at first but as it gets shorter it gets easier. And then you're going to take your two end pieces and pull them keeping your center pieces tight and then just pull those side pieces all the way up to the top. And that's the first half of your square knot. Then you're going to basically do the reverse. So take your piece on your left, bring it under your center cords, take that piece on the right, bring it over your center cords, and under your piece on the left, pull it all the way through, and then pull them tight. This is a pretty basic knot, so um, you can also look up tutorials for this specific knot but it's literally the same thing over and over. You're gonna take your piece on your right, cross it under your two cords in the center, cross it over your piece on the left, take your left piece, cross it over the center pieces, under the right piece, and pull it tight. And then to finish that knot, you'll do the same thing, just in the reverse, starting with the left side. And this is what I did over and over and over because I wanted a really long piece of macrame cord um, with this knot. So I actually ended up balling up the ends of it and it made it a lot easier to pull it through. So now I'm just gonna take this and glue it along the outside edge of my tray. So just using a bit of hot glue, I glued this all around and pushed it in tight and I think it adds a nice extra touch and gives it that sort of boho feel, which I love. And now I can style it with some candles or some jewelry, whatever you want. I just think it's a really cute tray. You can make the leaves any color you want. You could use flowers even if you wanted to. And um, I really like the way that it turned out. And then I also just cut off that end there and glued it down as you can see. And now we have our finished tray. For the last one I had this old candle jar that I had cleaned out and I really wanted to do something with it. 
So I gave it a coat of my pink chalk spray paint and then I decided to take some of my wooden beads and start gluing them around the outside. So again, I didn't measure this, I just sort of eyeballed it, tried to keep them the same distance and level apart and I went all the way around. And then I did another level of them and this time I went in between that initial level. So each of the beads up above, I would put a bead down below in between them. Then I did another few coats of spray paint to make the beads match and I kind of think this looks like a little alienish, but also pretty cool. So I actually really love how it turned out as a little planter. Mm -hmm. 